Hello, it's Timmy here. The Wellies have a Volvo V40 to look at. Right inside, we have a soot filter full message and the orange symbol down there. It's in restricted performance, so it's really slow. Uh, he said the engine oil light was on as well, but that's been topped up. So I'm using the Smart Safe STO8. This is just been trying to sound out for a while. 2016 V40, uh, two liter diesel. Do a health report. This is just gonna scan through all of the different modules on the car and give us what ones are showing up as uh, false. You can see that this smart safe is basically a launch tool. It's just under a different brand. So we're gonna look at right tire pressures. We're not worried about these ones. So the engine one, these ones is the codes that we're gonna be looking at. P double O B C mass airflow range performance. So that might indicate a leak somewhere. Exhaust pressure sensor A range performance calculation. Exhaust pressure sensor engine oil level too low. P2463 soot accumulation and a P24A4 particulate filter restriction. Right, uh, we're going to go to do some live data. Let's have a look. Press it here. Data stream. Okay, I've ticked off these two items. Uh, graph, combine. Okay, so you can see the orange one isn't really moving. Let me hold the revs up a little bit longer. So it is climbing, but very slowly. So that should be following the engine speed. So we, we've got an issue there with that. Blockage maybe somewhere, so. Back. Data stream, we're going to look at some other stuff, which is the uh, DPF. So it's not listed as that, so maybe particular filter. Particle trap pressure difference. Nineteen point two and 61.33 grams of soot which is I think around about the max that it can go to is 65, 62 some cars. Right we're gonna have to get the engine cover off of this. I, I was expecting it to be the Ford 2 litre TDI but I'm not too sure if it's the actual Volvo unit at the minute. We'll have to get this cover off. Okay engine covers off yeah it is the Peugeot Ford 2 litre engine. Uh, from what I can see I think it is. So, what issues have we got? We've got some wet around here. We've also got wet. That could be. That could have been where he was filling the oil. We've got. Looks to be wet down around the injectors. Again, I don't know if that's spillage. If he's been spilling the oil there, but over here certainly isn't. So yeah, looking at this, we've got the Volvo here. Maybe it is, the, it is the Volvo engine. I was expecting most of the Volvo ones are five cylinder. This is a four cylinder diesel, so I didn't expect on a 2015 to have. This is the newer sort of four cylinder Volvo engine. Um, yeah, you don't see this engine that often. I don't see it that often anyway. So first, I'm just going to try and confirm that we haven't got any leaks because we've got one for the airflow fault, so we're just doing a smoke pressure test through the intake. I'm just going to see if we can see any sort of signs of leakage. We might see one here, I'm suspecting, or maybe around where the injectors are. So, yeah, so if, you ha if you've had, if there's work being done on it, he's, yeah. he's, customer thinks it may be an old fault for the manifold pressure code. Because this was leaking and it, it was taken off and removed and it would the EGR was cleaned and the gasket here. Was the gasket replaced? No. But we haven't got we haven't got a leak. It's just been on for a few minutes now. We can't find any any air leaks. Okay, we can't find 
any leaks, so we're going to turn this off. Yeah, that's what we sh that's what we would see if we did have a leak somewhere. So I've just disconnected the inlet pipe here. Get that out. And we can see we've got a, an upstream pressure sensor there, so that's going to be one of the faults that we were looking at. Yeah, that's clean oil. So that's that's not a leak. That's yeah, clean. So that's probably, yeah, miss, miss, when she fills it, it goes bloody everywhere. So we're going to need to get this out and clean the pipe down using a drill, maybe same as the Reynolds. I've, ne I've do you know what? I've never seen, I've never seen this part on a on a Volvo. I didn't realise this Volvo had this setup. Okay, so I've removed that with a 27 millimeter socket, just over there like that. See, this is um, it's a sort of solid setup, so it screws into it. Okay, we can see there we are holding pressure. So that it is definitely blocked. So the important thing about testing that is just show that that is blocked. So we haven't got an issue with the sensor. You don't need to change these because they are expensive as well. So just filling up that recess there with some of the DPF cleaner fluid in this bottle. So next I'm going to use this. This wire is uh, guitar wire, so it's really good for not not breaking. I've had loads of people say they've tried to do what I'm doing and they've snapped the cable down the pipe. I've done hundreds if not thousands of these and I've never done that myself so maybe you're using the wrong wire. This is guitar wire and uh, it's just folded over so it's sort of double strength and then we'll we'll um, work our way down this pipe. Okay so I've managed to get through that. Now we've got air coming from here. So we have of course checked that that now is flowing. We can feel the air coming out, so that's fine. We'll show you that on the sensor now in a minute. So when the engine was running, it looked like it's breathing a bit heavy from here. It's gonna have a little a bit smoky, isn't it, from there? Just to open the oil cap. It's got massive crankcase pressure. We got um, we thought it was like leaking from there. We got a new one from the motor. Okay, so the customer is saying that they've tried a new cap on us because they know this issue is there. Um, I mean, it's either a block breeder, but the, the thing that's telling me it could be sort of coming from inside the engine is he's now said that it's... How often are you topping the oil up? Uh, every two weeks, half a litre. Every two weeks, half a litre of oil. So, could have worn, worn rings, really. That probably shows why that uh, we had the correlation code. If we've got an air going in here and we're getting air build up inside the crankcase which is circulating around. Uh, I mean obviously we, we had a blockage there which I don't know how the ECU interprets different areas on this this car. Don't do a lot of these. It is possible on certain cars depending on how it's programmed that this blocked up sensor here can cause airflow related faults but high 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 back pressure in here i'd say this engine is sort of coming to its end of life okay back in here if we go to graph have we got um combine we've got the exhaust manifold and engine speed just want those two really now if we if we accelerate this now we should have very similar patterns See like that. So that shows me that that now is working. Now, of course, some of this we, I don't I don't really get involved with, you know, in, internal engine issues. I haven't for a long time. So anyone that's familiar with this engine may say, I know what that is. It's it's common. Could be the could be the, you know, may need a new um, rocker cover. But if it's using oil, yeah, it's not good. So with the help of a torch, I have found the DPF pressure sensor. Well, it's it's behind there, but we can see the tubes for it there. One and two. Okay, so we just confirmed that we have the same pressure that we're getting from the sensor there with a digital manometer. Okay, we've got 
our pressurized gun connected to the DPF holes. That's connected to the compressor at 130 psi. DPF cleaning fluids in here from launch, and we're going to squeeze the trigger. Going to do this with the engine running. Just going to hold the trigger full. I'm not going to do it in burst. Just to complete hold the trigger until all the fluid's gone in. Then we can put back the intake pipe. And then uh, hopefully we should see the pressure dropping. Once the intake pipe is off on these, we do need to disconnect the airflow meter. So it has got that Renault uh, sort of design about it where it won't run if the air airflow meter is connected whilst the intake pipe is disconnected. Okay, we're going to get back inside now. We're going to hold the revs up and we should see the DPF pressure dropping down. Get this lit up. Oh. So we're just going to hold that and we want to see the pressure dropping down on this. This is the live data for the DPF pressure. We'd like to see that coming down around sort of 50 millibars or HPA, same thing. We're just going to wait till that smoke sort of fades away. Steam, really. Okay, we're just checking the idle now. We're at sort of 12, so we're not, not where we need to be just yet. I had to connect up my power bank to the camera because it's going flat. It's really handy this. I'll put a link in the video description. Okay, we've reconnected the inlet pipes now. All of the sensors reconnected back. Yeah, this, um, this jackery is obviously, it keeps the phone charged for me. And what it does is obviously I just connect the solar panel, leave it on the floor over there and it keeps it full all day. So it's handy when you're out on the road. Back in the vehicle, just going to try and get the ignition to stay on. Here we go. 3000 RPM. We have around 80 pressure. Grams of soot have come down from 61 to 47. So I'm just looking to reset the DPF now. Otherwise we won't be able to clear the fault codes. We only do this after it's been cleaned. So these are some of the fault codes we had. So we might have obviously the air mass sensor fault there. Be, uh, well, no, we've got one anyway, but that one maybe has come up because of obviously had that disconnected. Airflow is too low. Yeah. Right, we're going to reset all of these. Obviously, some of these have been off as well while they were doing EGRs and stuff, and it hasn't been reset. So some of these codes we we can sort of ignore, maybe. Clear. Check the codes are gone. Read the live data again. Okay, now we're going to take the vehicle for a test drive. Smoke out the entire road. Okay, we've taken it on a, a long test drive and we have six grams of soot, nine uh, millibars of pressure. It's sort of at the maximum where I'd like it to be, so it's a bit above where it's... I haven't checked that 3000 RPM yet. 67, 66. So we're, we're within range, but just barely. Okay, uh, so the car is fixed, but here's the bad bit. Obviously it's got high blow-by blow by pressure in the crankcase. Um, I think that's down to compression, uh, the, the piston rings. To be honest, it's using like a litre of oil, uh, more than a litre of oil a month. So, I think it's the piston rings. Uh, you know, it would need obviously confirmation of that, but uh, so because of that, and then we haven't really done anything to resolve the air uh, airflow correlation. Um, and I think the airflow correlation is coming because of that issue. So, I do think. I will either see this car again in the future, or maybe he, he's going to get rid of it, but I don't think 
that this is going to be a permanent fix. We have fixed, obviously most of the stuff we've fixed what we've done to it, but I'm not happy with the, the high blow by, so I would say that sometime in the future again this car is going to give an issue for that. So that's it, we're all finished on this one and I'll see you on our next video.